Yeah, hi, it's Keith. Um, I'm just reading your comments about using RCDs, residual current devices. It's very difficult to answer on an exact installation because it's more down to the wiring. First of all, if the inverter must be grounded, so make sure the inverter's got a good grounding. So problem on incoming RCDs um, is what comes into the RCD must come back out. It's, 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 it's like a, the old fashioned RCDs, or they, we used to call them ELCBs, Earth Leakage Circuit Breaker, was what it was like, a, was a Wheatstone Bridge. And it causes an imbalance and it used to energize a coil in the center of the bridge. And it would trip it. And that's how they work. They were a mechanical device. But nowadays, obviously, with electronics, they most of them use this little Motorola chip. So you've got to make sure there's no imbalance. So basically, if you connect all your neutrals together and you're neutral to ground, then your power flow is not going to come back on the neutral. So it will trip. Simple as. It will always trip. So this is why we include the relay to stop that happening. And so the, the, the bonding from the neutral bond is only made when the inverter is on islanding mode and that allows an RCD on the other side. But providing, if you have a, a nuisance trip, the first thing you could do is try just removing the bonding. So remove the neutral bonding and see if that's what's causing it. Um, that's the first thing I would do. Um, and go backwards and then try to isolate what's causing the trip because it is generally on the neutral side it causes it rather than the live side because if you've got a live to new, a ground um, you may have a bit of a leaky but you you, you get a sizzling and you get bang and whatever so it's it, it, it's generally a neutral problem so the first thing i would do is remove everything remove all you remove your neutral bonds and to the edge of the ground, so you just have a nice clean power going in with nothing connected. Try that, make sure that works. And if that's fine, then you know the inverter is fine, then you know there's no problem. And make sure the inverter's got a, a, a proper ground on the ground connection. Once you've established that, then you need to add your relay and look at your, your, your connections. So if you've got a neutral bond um, across the, the, the three connections, then you need then to add your relay. Make sure you're using the correct side of the relay. So it's not normally open, normally closed. Make sure you use the right side because if you've got the wrong side of the relay, then it'll, you, you'll trip the RCD every time. And sometimes you might, because you, when the relay is energized, you say, well, it's working this time. It's not working other times because it might be when you're islanding and the relay's energized. So make sure the relay's not working backwards. So that's the next thing to, to do. And then, of course, the, the, the whole idea of the bond is so if you're using an RCD the other side, you, 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 it, will, it will operate. And so that's, that's the real purpose of it. So first thing I would do if you've got a nuisance RCD is disconnect your, your bond and try it and make sure and just check and make sure everything is working. Check that you, your inverter's got a grounding. Once you know that's all good and then put your bonding and then put your relay and make sure your relay is not backwards. If all is there, it should work fine. And there should be no problem at all. So it is down. It, 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 sometimes it's a real pain in the neck to find. Um, you know, it, it is, but, but the RC, the, the LC, it's, it's, it's a protection device and I totally agree with them. Don't disconnect this because it's important because your grid coming in, your feed coming into it. If you've got a problem, then you get electrocuted. So, you know, absolutely needs to be there in place. So don't disconnect it. Um, you know, as an electrical engineer, I've had many times where I've been on houses and industrial units looking for an RCD fault, and sometimes they're a pain in the neck to find. Um, but it's always something silly. So it's, it's best to test everything, get, start from the basics, disconnect everything, check you've not got a problem and build back up that way. Um, and that's the way we'd always do it on electrical wiring. Um, we try to isolate where the, where the fault is coming from. And you can often just do it with your meter. You just do a ground to neutral test and you can see where it's coming from. You, you may have a fault further, further back. So it might be um, on a connector, a joint or whatever. It's, something's causing the, the, the ground to neutral bond. It could be on a switch, it could be a faulty switch. So if you went backwards um, and then say you just connect just the inverter, you move your bond if it's still there, then obviously work, disconnect the inverter and work backwards until you eventually find the problem. Um, but it, it is a bit of a nuisance. Um, but normally these things can be found fairly quickly within, within an hour. It depends on how large the installation is. So, sorry, I hope that's useful for you. Um,
I've done there, been there, won the T-shirt. Um, always, we've always found the problems. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit infuriating, you know, to find these, the, especially RCDs. There, it can be a real pain in the neck. But uh, it's always something absolutely silly. Thanks anyway.